The idea of surgical correction of refractive errors dates back to over a century. Since then, several refractive surgical techniques were developed. Many were abandoned, while others are currently in widespread use. However, the search for an ideal refractive surgical procedure still exists. In 1986, we developed a PMMA intrastromal corneal ring of small diameter, triangular cross-section, flexible and brake resistant to be implanted in the anterior half of the corneal stroma. Long-term animal experiments showed implant biocompatibility. In 1991, we implanted the first such ring in a myopic human patient with amblyopia and anisometropia using partial keratectomy with microkeraton. The four-year clinical follow-up shows the eye to be asymptomatic with stable refraction and visual acuity. The technique evolved into a new surgical procedure in which the stroma is partially dissected employing a proprietary semicircular double-bladed spatula to build an intrastromal channel. Once this initial dissection is performed, the channel is finished with the aid of another simple spatula. The ring is then easily inserted into the channel. Potential risks of corneal perforation are reduced as the instruments and ring tips can be visualized throughout the entire process. Patient recovery is quick and usually uneventful. After 24 hours, there are no complaints of pain or other discomforts. In post-op, visual acuity enables patients to retake normal activities without the need of spectacle correction. At this stage, photophobia is the only persistent symptom which disappears after three months. Final refractive correction and visual acuity are achieved in about two months. Halos and reflections have been observed in some patients in the first three months, but not causing significant discomfort, probably due to the prismatic effect caused by the ring's triangular cross-section. In general, patient satisfaction level is high. This patient was referred to our clinic with prior history of corneal transplant, contact lens intolerance, and subsequent radial keratotomy in the donor cornea. The recommended conduct was a new penetrating keratoplasty, but we first tried implanting our interstromal corneal ring in the graft. A three months follow-up shows an asymptomatic cornea with good visual acuity. Sequential photokeratoscopy and corneal topography showed a continuous improvement of the corneal regularity. The effectiveness of the procedure was impressive, as well as the safety of the superficial ring placement in the donor corneal stroma. The intrastromal corneal ring presents several interesting advantages, such as the preservation of corneal aspheristi, avoiding optical aberrations, reversibility, enabling ring explantation and restoration of corneal integrity and correction readjustability, allowing for ring exchange when and if necessary. Our experience shows this technique to be easily learned and clinically safe. Corneal epithelial exfoliation, ring exposure or extrusion were not reported. Our results suggest that this novel intrastromal corneal ring implantation is a promising procedure for correcting low, moderate and high degrees of myopia.